book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, 1 through 7, will be the foundational passage for our study today. Thank you for coming our way. And uh, you who have not met, I'm glad to see you, and I'm glad to be a part of this gospel effort. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 1 through 7. Let's look at this text together. Therefore, sin... We have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifest manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to, to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves... Uh, your servant for Christ's sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. Uh, this morning, simple lesson, turn on the light mm -hmm. so we can see. Turn on the light so we can see. Have you ever gone into a room and it was dark in the room and you stumbled around about and somebody said, where's the light switch? Turn the light on so we can see. And we all understand that about light. When dark is in a room, lightning disappears. When light comes into the room, darkness disappears. Mm -hmm. So in our lesson, Turn On the Light, we'll look at Paul letter to the Corinthians, I want you to really listen. Paul speaks of the law of Moses. Listen to me. In 2 Corinthians 3, 6 to 16, he talks about the law of Moses. Then, 2 Corinthians 3, 17 to 4, uh, 2, he talks about the Lord's message. And then, in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 to 7, he talked about the laws to mankind. Now let's look at what we have. Let's do that again. He talks about the law of Moses. He talks about the Lord's <laughs> message. And he talks about the laws to mankind. And that's going to be where most of our time is spent this morning in the worship service, and I really want you to listen. Now, first of all, we have the source of light. First John 1, 5, God is light. Then we have the Savior is light, John 1, 1 through 14, John 8 and verse number 12. We have the Spirit brought to light. John 16, 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, 
he will guide you into ALL, all truth. Mm -hmm. All right? Then we have the scripture is life, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. And then we have the saints are life, 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 through 6. And then we have the sinners need of the life. Uh, Acts chapter 26 and verse number 18, Luke wrote about Paul. He says that you may turn them from darkness to light, mm -hmm. from the power of Satan unto God, that they may have remission of sin. That's what this meeting is all about. That's what the Church of Christ is all about, is carrying the light of the gospel to a dying and perishing world. We got to turn the light on. Pretty good? Mm -hmm. Please listen to me. Look here. I have some graphics. And uh, Brother Miller, the reason I use graphics so I can understand. And I figure if I can understand it as smart as you are, you'll get it. Now, we got a light. Look at that. He's fighting. The light of the gospel. Look at that. What are you doing to turn the light on? Are you turning it on? Are you supporting the light? Now, good? Now, in Christ, in the church, to save the blood of Christ, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 11. Listen to this. Satan in the secular things. Please listen. Satan's spiritual things, religious darkness. Got it? Uh, Satan in the secular thing, business first, word of success, money. Bible says in 1 Corinthians 16, uh, 1 Timothy 16, for the love of money is the root of all evil, all kinds of evil. Do you think that's true? Yes, sir. Hang us off your moment. We live in a capitalistic society. Money, 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 money. It takes money to keep things rolling. We understand that. Mm -hmm. But brother, don't get too hooked up in it and think that's all in life is money. Because Paul said in the same chapter, uh, chapter uh, 17 or 16, we brought nothing in this world, verse 67, and it's for certain we'll carry nothing out. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, uh, verse number 17, listen to this. He said, charge them that are rich in this world's good, listen to this, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to a voice karma sometimes and ask him about uncertain riches. It's like an invisible hand coming and snatch it away. And if all your trust is in on uncertain riches, what are you going to do with God? Mm -hmm. You know, Job said something that was interesting. Job said when he lost his cow, look, look at he lost his fame, he lost his family, he lost his friends, he lost his finance, but he didn't lose his faith. Mm -hmm. If you lose everything that you have, would you give up your faith? Faith is the victory. Mm -hmm. Hold to your faith. Well, that's a little excursion. Let me get back. Where the success, where the, uh, where the enjoy life. Let the good time roll, party time, drinking and dancing. Oh, we know that. And we know Satan is associated with that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we don't know about Satan's spiritual things, religious darkness, denominationalism, emotionalism, feel good religion. That's enough. Mark it. And what he's done, he's blinded the mind in the watcher, in the secular, and in the spirit. He's blinded the mind. He don't want the gospel life. Now, brother, please listen to me. All of you listen to me. If you think one time the devil <coughs> want us to turn the light on, it is dark, dizzy. Uh, depraved society in which we live. You're wrong. 
keep in mind that the devil doesn't want the gospel out to the world. Now, what he wants to make sure that things get so bad that we forget our calling as members of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. I tell my brethren at home, black and white, so brethren, don't you get involved so much in politics and all this crazy stuff that's going on in America that we forget our calling. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm all right with politics, but it's got its place. But politics was not going to solve the problem of sin. Right. Wait, wait a minute. The gospel is designed by God to end any racial differences, whether it's Jew or Arab, blacks or white, wherever. Or, you know, you got it, doesn't make any difference. The gospel is designed to do that. Now, anything else, it's not going to work. You can have all the peace meetings. You can have all the councils coming together. It's not going to work. The gospel is designed to bring peace between God and man, which is a mission of sin, and as a result, we can have peace with one another. Mm -hmm. Do I get an amen somewhere? Amen. Amen. You see that? Mm -hmm. Now, let's get real. Now, with that in mind, let's go here. Now, we have something here. There was a stall out of age. Let me explain this. You don't hear it very often today. Uh, we have the starlight age. You got it? That's a little light. Little light. Then you have the moonlight age. You have a little more light. And then you have the sunlight age. It's the brightest light. It's not going to be anymore. Now look what we have. We have a starlight age. That's the patriotic dispensation. It lasted from Adam to Moses. Then you have the moonlight age. That's the more mosaic or Jewish age. It lasted from Moses to Christ. Listen. And then we have a sunlight age, and it's the greatest age, and we're living in it. Mm -hmm. It's the Christ and his gospel. You got that? Amen. Listen to me carefully. All of the Old Testament prophets pointed to this. Amen. Got it? Notice what the Bible says in Ephesians 3 and verse number 5. It says, which in other ages. You see the ages here? Starlight, moonlight. Other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Now, this is the age we're talking about right now. Pretty good. Now, brother, that's the way the old time preachers used to preach. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I've read, I've read books, uh, read books, and let's listen. And uh, I don't know if any of y'all even know about this place down here in Kentucky, the old meeting house. Y'all ever heard of it? Mm -hmm. oh, Mucky. Y'all ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. Listen, go down there and look at that someday. You, you'll be surprised what those guys went through to drop all of this denominational stuff. And you know what happened? If we don't look at history, we'll fall right back in that same trap. So we we got to stay on the battlefield. Listen here, Satan and his disciples are still busy. All right, now, that in mind, let's look at something now. Now, in our text that we read, we're going to run down this text here. One through three, we'll look at the apostles receive the light. Now, what light are you talking about? We're talking about the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. All right? Then we have the adversary restricts the light. What do you mean adversary? That's the devil. That's verse number four. Then we have the agents, five through seven, relay the light. What do you mean? Agents. People who spread the gospel. Got it? All right. Now, 
Let's go down this text. Paul says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry. What ministry? The apostles, listen to me carefully. The apostles were promised by Jesus to be guided into all truth. John 16, 13. Mm -hmm. Brethren, we are guided into all truth, but not the same way the apostles received it. Mm -hmm. They received it directly. First John, 1 Peter 1, 12. They preached the gospel by the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven. Mm -hmm. I preach the gospel by the Holy Spirit, but it's in this book. Amen. There is no direct operation of the Holy Spirit on anybody, Amen. saint or sinner. Mm -hmm. God speaks to everybody the same way through this book. Now, if you want to hear God speak, you got to open this book. Now, wait, wait a minute. Look at this. Holy Spirit. Text. Book. What in the world is the Holy Spirit's textbook? Here it is. Mm -hmm. Here's your textbook. Mm -hmm. When I was going to school, you didn't come to school without your book. Textbook. Why come to worship service and you don't have your book? Amen. Well, the teacher's going to teach you out the book. The examination that you're going to have is going to come out of the book. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a final examination in school, right? Are you going to pass or fail? They say, now, you boys, you need to study your book because that's where the test is going to come from. Mm -hmm. To Christians, the final examination is going to come out of this book. Mm -hmm. So you better study. You ever hear the story about the old lady, about 96 years old, sitting on the porch, rocking? And reading her Bible. Little kid said, Granny, what are you doing? She said, I'm cramming for fire. <laughs> <laughs> cramming for fire. Are you cramming for fire? <clears throat> well, let's go a little further. So the certainty about the gospel. We have, Paul said, we have this ministry. All right? Uh, uh, constant in the gospel. As we have received mercy, we faint not. Wait a minute. We're not going to, they receive mercy and we're not going to faint. Brethren, have we received mercy? Mm -hmm. You know, somebody asked me, Brother Sanders, why are you so crazy and dogmatic when you preach? Because I've been lost. I've been lost. Hey, do, do you remember when you were lost? I remember being lost. And I didn't even know it mm -hmm. until somebody turned the light on and voice, wow! Man, I was lost. In Vietnam, I was lost. All the time in the military, I was lost in my scene. In the Catholic Church, you lost. Over oh, in all that war in Vietnam, and God took care of me and didn't let me get a scratch. A little crazy, but I didn't get any, nothing on my body, my, my physical body. You follow me? Now, God was good to me, right? So I got to preach it, teach it. Now, pretty good. Now, the rest of my life is dedicated to that. What you say? No. Well, I don't need no wife. I've been had one for 53 years going on 54. I don't need I don't need no more children. That's old. My caboose is 39 years old. You know what a caboose is? The That's the last one. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? I don't need no money. If I hadn't made it now, I won't get it. I don't need no house. Or well, what do you need? All I need is breath in my body and a good body so I can preach the truth. The rest of the stuff don't count, man. Mm -hmm. At my age, worried about getting a, a, a big mansion, a $200,000 or $500,000 house, for what? I'm getting ready to check out, man. Mm -hmm. That's for these young people. That's for him. My time is spent on this gospel. Talk to me, somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can y'all understand that? Yeah, exactly. Your teenagers, listen to me. Mm -hmm. And to listen now, I know that most likely I'm going to die before you, most likely. Mm -hmm. But it's possible that I can throw dirt in your face. Mm -hmm. So don't you, would you want to bet on it? Oh, no, he, he, <laughs> he, he said, no, you won't bet on that? I, do you, I bet you're going to outlive me? You don't know that. Well, that's a little discouraging. Let's go back here now. Look here. Clear with the gospel. We see the certainty, the constant, clear with the gospel, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. We got too many denominational preachers are very dishonest. 
and we got some gospel preachers want to be dishonored, yes. but I'm watching them like I'm watching the Baptists. Mm -hmm. They'll turn anything over to make money. Dishonesty, a uh, chase in the gospel, walking, not walking craftiness. No, look, is that pretty good? All right, correct with the gospel. Not handling the word of God deceitfully. We don't need to try to twist the scripture to make sure we satisfy everybody. Amen. Can you hear me? Listen to me. I don't know if you people know what a junkyard is. Anybody? Y'all know what a junkyard is? Mm -hmm. Savage y'all. Mm -hmm. Well, where in Memphis they got a place called Southern Ten. They got a great big magnet. It is big as round as that, and they got a big crane picking it up. You know what? It's designed to pick up metal. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Mm -hmm. it, you know what it won't pick up? It won't pick wood up. You can put it on wood all day long. It won't pick it up. Glad, no, no. It pick, now, the gospel is designed to discriminate. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Everybody's not going to be saved. Mm -hmm. Some people turn it down, and the gospel works two ways. If you if you will accept it, have the right heart, it'll take you. But if you reject it, like wood, trouble, or hate, it won't. It won't. It's not going to do you any good. See that? Look here. Look here. Correct with the gospel. We don't handle the word of God deceitfully. Not only that, uh, citing the gospel, but by manifesting the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. I don't need to try to preach to satisfy people. Because you're not going to satisfy everybody. Amen. Wait a minute. I, I tell my, my children, I said, when you get married, I said, uh, you're not going to ever be able to totally satisfy your wife or your husband. <laughs> well, what should I do? Just do what's right. Uh-oh. I didn't even get a bow on that. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. I told my wife, I said, honey, I'm not here to try to satisfy. My job is to make sure I do right. Mm -hmm. Whatever God tells me to do by my family, I need to do that. Now, it may not satisfy you. So you, you're not going to satisfy everybody in the world. You just do what's right. Now, that's fair, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Is that right? And I don't know, this couple over here, they look, uh, look real good. They look, look almost as good as I look. <laughs> they do. You know, they've been, they got... I don't know, out of years on them. But satisfy, do what God saved us. And if they get in line with God, they'll be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Now, I hope you got that. Now, let's go a little further here. Now, cut off from the gospel. Look at that. What do you mean cut off? He said, look at here. But if our gospel be here, what do you mean here? Cut off. It is here to them that are lost. Do you believe there are people in this county that are lost. Mm -hmm. Do you know anybody in Gamal that's lost? What county is this? Monroe County? Mm -hmm. You know anybody in this county lost? Yep. Well, what's your job? You got to know, wait a minute. Just think. Think. This is. If you, if you start doing this, it'll be easy on you. Don't have this gospel meeting then. After gospel meeting, you'd be all on fire. And just going to set the woods on fire. You're going to convert everybody. Let me tell you what you do. Just slow it down a little bit. Slow it down. Have it in your mind. Said, I'm going to try to set up a class real hard with one person in 12 months. Listen, one. Now, you may have to talk to 10 people to get the class set up. Say, I'm going to try one person to teach one person in 12 months. Now, it, it may be you have to try 15 or 20 times and you find one. Now, don't try to be in a hurry to baptize. Amen. Try to take your time and teach them. What did you say? Teach them. What? Teach them. Your job is to teach them. To teach them. Now, can you do that in 12 months? 12 months. Just one person. If everybody in this church would do that, in a year from now, how many people would be? Double. Now, watch this now. Don't worry about the money to support the congregation. 
Because the money is already out there in the world. Your job is not to go out there and ask them for money. Go out there and teach them Christ, and they'll bring you the money. Amen. Mm -hmm. I had an old preacher to tell me. He said, come here, boy. I said, yes, sir. He said, don't go going to a congregation asking them for money to get what you want done at your congregation. He said, the money is already out there in the heathen. What you need to do is take the gospel and take your time and go out there and teach them. And you're doing your job. And when you teach them right, they'll bring the money to you. My brother needs to learn that. Mm -hmm. And everybody else wants somebody to give them something. Go out and work. Jesus said, go in my vineyard and work. What's your right? I'll, I'll pay. Is that good? Work? All right. Let's go a little further. Now, if I got cut off from the gospel. The folks in the world are cut off from it with denominationalism and everything else. Well, let's go a little further. The adversary restricts the life. Blinded by Satan's works. Second Corinthians chapter 13, 11, 13, it talks about, uh, it talks about uh, Satan has, a, uh, you got it there? Second Corinthians uh, eleven thirteen. I, I I don't want to read it here. If you got a good, you got a good Bible. Yes. Sir. What kind you got? Is it King James? It's New King James. In New King James, you might mess me up there. But go ahead and read it. For what did it say? For such are false apostles. Wait, look, look here. So you got false apostles. What else? Deceitful workers. Deceitful workers. Transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Read it. And no wonder. What? For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of life. Now, see here, listen to that. You got, you got the doctrine of Satan, you got the devil, you got his doctrine, and you got his disciple. You got that? Mm -hmm. Don't want to do that again. You got the devil, you got his disciples, and you got their doctrine. All right? Now, it says, in whom the God, small g, of this world, now this world is the Greek word which means age. The God of this age. And boy, let me tell you something. Do you know that Satan and his disciples, they are taking over America. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are taking over America. Listen, I don't believe what I see. Sometimes I wake up and I look at television and I ask my wife, I said, what in the world happened to all of the real good movies that we used to look at? Mm -hmm. We used to look at Andy Griffith. Mm -hmm. No profanity. Amos and Andy. No profanity. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. No profanity. The Long Rangers and Tonto. Mm -hmm. Daniel Boone. Just good, clean movies. Now, Everything you see on TV is not worth that little boy listening to. Amen. And we take our kids and put them in front of that television. And, and you know what? The sad thing about it, they got these iPhones and iPads with all that filth on them, and we just let them go. And do you know, that's hurting us. That's hurting America. And it's hurting us. It's hurting the church. Somebody needs to say something about it. And brethren, we're getting all involved in politics. Somebody say, you know what? The church is using, losing the young people. The church not only losing any young people. You're losing your own people. You're losing your own children because you're not teaching your own children at home. Amen. you got to teach your kids value. Let me tell you something. Let me help the young people out. You teach your children to come to worship service. You teach them, don't do this, don't do that. That's good. But let me try, let, let, let me suggest something else. Have your children to, to have a standard to follow. That's a, that's a value. And so now listen, is this right or wrong? I want you to, I want you to do some research on it and you tell me later. Teach them about value. Rather than saying, don't do this or don't do this. No, teach them value. Teach them value. Why? So when they leave home and go off to college and come back, they know valuable stuff when they left home, and then when they get out there among the heathens, they'll choose the value over the non-value. Mm -hmm. 
Then, then they won't be coming to service because you made them come. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go a little further here. So we have blinded by Satan's Satan's work. Now, then we have believed in Satan's way of them which believe not. They believe in Satan's ways. And brother, in our country, well, I keep bringing that up, man. I hate to do that, but I'm just, I'm worried. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm, I'm hurt over? I got some great grandboys. I got four great grandboys. And it seemed like their parents uh, been, well, they have never obeyed the gospel. So they're in the way of heathenism. That's where they are. They, they look good. They look almost good as I look. But they, they got something in the head that I don't, I, I'm trying to help them out. And they don't want to hear nothing of value. They just want to hear crazy, worldly, Crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about it. And now my little grandboys, great grandboys, now they're going to grow up. If, if somebody don't get to them, they're going to be heathen. Mm -hmm. They won't bring them around me. They're afraid I'm going to teach them something good. Mm -hmm. And I am. Mm -hmm. Now what's going to happen to them? Now let me ask the question. Will there be a church of Christ here 50 years from now? Boys, I doubt if you'll be here. Some later, I doubt if you be here. Your boy may be hanging around, but you, you 50 years from now. Yeah, I'll be the oldest. Isn't that something? Now, that's the question that James wrote. What did all the old faithful brethren die? What's, what Do we have young people coming on that like value? All right, let's do it like this. In this county, in Kentucky, in America, if we don't stand for value, guess what? We're going down the drain. I mean Big time. Mm -hmm. And you'll have somebody else over in this country dogging us out. Because we don't appreciate what our forefathers did for us to have the land of the free. Mm -hmm. Great. Our people are trying to get over here and, and listen, and we just tearing things up. What in the world is going on? People in America, can you imagine waking up in America mad? Can you imagine me waking up in America mad? There's something wrong with me. I'm not waking up in America, man. I've been to foreign countries. I know what it's like. I love America. I don't know what Maybe y'all don't like it. I don't know. You won't say amen. Maybe y'all don't like it. <laughs> That's a little excursion. Let me get back to the main part here. Uh, then we were blinded by Satan's work, believe in Satan's ways. Uh, brilliant is the Savior's way. Then, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shine unto them. Now, that's the Savior's way. Good? But we got to turn the light on. All right. Do this. Point number three here, five through seven here. The ages relay the gospel. What do you mean relay? You everybody, you, you ever run a relay? Boss, is that your grand boy there or your boy? I tell you. Yeah. yeah. He's kin to you. He's kin to you. You ever run a relay? You ever heard of? It? Right? You ever did y'all ever see that in school? You? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to relate to these young people. They you be running and he Now you can't drop it in there. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You can't can't drop it. No, you gotta you gotta get it. now we don't we didn't we need to have this gospel where these young people is carrying the gospel, like in a relay, mm -hmm. really. And you know when them guys running in the relay, or uh, the girls, you know, they, they putting everything in it. Mm -hmm. Enthusiasm, they in it, right? Because they're in the win. Mm -hmm. Now, are you in it to win? We want to win for Christ. What? We got to take this gospel. Amen. Somebody asked me, Brother Sanders, why you try to be on TV? That's the way to go, to the media. This is right. You know, I was back at home, sitting in the office, and Somebody got a call from Arkansas. And a white brother called me and said, Brother Shannon, my wife want to see you. I said, I don't know nothing about your wife, boy. She said, she's been watching you on television. And look, she wants you to talk to her. She wants to be baptized. I said, well, you're baptized. So you don't need me for that. But anyway, they came on over. Secretary let him in. I said, what can I do for you? She said, I want to be baptized. I said, I don't know nothing about what you're talking about. I said, I don't know what you know. What are you 
talking about? I said, hey, you really, do? let me, let me, I took her and taught her for 90 minutes at a Bible class. And I said, now, do you want to be baptized now? She said, still want to be baptized. I said, you know what you got to do? I said, you got to give up all. She came out of the Catholic Church. That's why she called. Mm -hmm. I said, you, got, you can't go to Mass no more. You don't go to no priest for no confessional no more. You don't, none of that stuff. None of that. No baptizing, baby. No, no calling no priest father. Because you become a priest and you can pray for yourself. But what are you saying all this for, Brother Shannon? I taught her because she had been watching <laughs> television and she didn't think I had the time or would take the time out to teach her and baptize, and baptize her into Christ. I said, now you get out and spread this gospel. Down in Holly Branch, Mississippi, a girl there uh, told me, said, Brother Shannon, you don't know me, but you, you preach the gospel and cut me out of the Presbyterian or Lutheran church. I said, well, I did some mighty good cutting me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, how? She never saw me before, but she watching that television. And brethren, the way to go is me. I reached, when I have preached on TV, not Brad, at James Road, I have a gospel meeting every week. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I don't worry about, it. well, how many, how many folks, I don't know how many thousands of people are looking at that television. I had him call me, said, Brother Shannon, uh, we had a guy who obeyed the gospel. And you cut him out of the Presbyterian church. I don't know nothing about it. That's not me. That's the power of the gospel. Mm -hmm. right. Got it? I don't want no praise. Amen. I'm not looking for no praise. I give the praise to the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for us. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, well, we got, we got a job to do. Well, let's go here. Agents rely, uh, relay the gospel. The commanding, the communion of the light. Now watch this. For we preach not ourselves. I'm not preaching John Chan. I preach Christ. Mm -hmm. That good? Mm -hmm. But Jesus Christ the Lord and ourselves, your servant, for Jesus' sake. Paul said, we don't preach ourselves, but we're servants for your sake. Watch it, for the cause of Christ. See, that's me. I don't want no glory. I tell brothers and brethren, I don't want no glory. No. Uh-uh. Junior, I don't want no glory. Don't try to glorify. I don't want no, I don't know. I know Guy Ann Wood said this long time ago. Brother Guy Ann Wood said, I like perfume, but I don't drink it. I like compliments, but I don't let it go to my head. I got to keep my place in the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one king, and that's Jesus. He's the only head, and I'm just a faithful servant and trying to humble myself and do his will so when I die, I can go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, what else? I don't want no glory. I tell him, I don't know if I don't want no glory. Don't praise me. Uh -uh, I don't want that. that not all the praise and glory to God, not me. Mm -hmm. Now, did I get that over? Could, could you understand that, sweetheart? Did you understand what I'm saying? I don't want no glory. no. Michael Miller, I don't want no clue. Brother Shannon, you're a fine preacher. Whoopie do. Well, I'm not, I'm not Jesus Christ. Paul said, Did Christ die? Did, did, was Paul crucified for you? Did, were, were you baptized in Paul? No. Christ. I'm pointing folks to Christ. Good. Let's go a little bit. The commandments to the light. Watch it. For God, who commanded the look, the light to shine out of darkness. Now, let's stop here a moment. You really won't get the gist of this statement here until you go to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, 3, and 4. Now, let me show you something. See, when God created this world, watch this here. He, it was dark and in chaos, but he called <laughs> light to shine. Mm -hmm. And when light shone, it things were better. Now, Paul is saying, watch it, in, in Genesis, Moses wrote, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light, and that it was good, watch it, and God divided the light from the dark. You got it? There was universal darkness on the earth until God said, 
let there be light. You all hear that? Mm -hmm. Now watch this. The whole world was in dark. Whole world. But when Jesus Christ accomplished his mission, he says, I'm the light of the world. So the gospel light, now it shines up the whole world. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Our job is to turn on the light in America mm -hmm. so they can see Amen. because American people are blind Amen. spiritually. They are lost in sin and we have the panacea or the remedy and here we are sitting back and won't say nothing. Somebody asked me, somebody said, you know what? I was, one time I was down here preaching in this congregation and I went to Walmart with my overalls on. And I said, nobody here know me. So I walked in with my overalls on and a black lady came out from behind the desk and ran over there. She said, hey, I know you. I said, whoa, I don't know you. <laughs> she said, you're on TV. I said, lady, you sure? She said, your name is John Shannon. She said, you the one who preached that gospel. Wait a minute. I said, did you listen? I said, will you continue to listen to the gospel? Not me, the gospel. Amen. Because the gospel is for the salvation of mankind. Do you feel like that? Well, what are you saying, media? You've been on television too. Yeah, Eric. Y'all know Eric? Pick up. He's a youngster. He's been on a lot of it, and that's good. Need more of it. Prepare yourself to preach the gospel. Oh, boy. Well, that's a little excursion. That's all right here now. That good? Now, hey man, I like this. I like this. Now, uh, there was universal doctrine in the world without the revelation of the gospel of Christ. Be listening. Before the gospel of Christ, the, dark, the whole world's in darkness. Got it? That's why we need to turn the light on. Mm -hmm. In this town, and this county, and this part of the state, God has called the church of Christ and Gamal to be here to turn the light on. Wait a minute. Turn the light on in your life and in the neighborhood. People need to see that this light has changed you. Don't try to change them and you're doing the same thing they're doing. All right? Let's go a little further here now. Uh, we have the uh, communion of the light. We have the command uh, to the light. And we have the comprehension of the light. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Then, and here's an interesting thing here. Watch this. Listen. Clay vessels for the light. You really won't understand that term. When Paul said we have this treasure in earthen vessels, you really won't understand about the earthen vessels until you go to the book. Look at this. Of Judges chapter 7, 1 to 17. You won't really understand that. You know where God did? Y'all know the story, don't you? Was it Gideon? Y'all remember Gideon? Mm -hmm. Going to the battle. Mm -hmm. And guess what he told him to do? I want you to get some pots and get your hammer. And listen, I want you to listen. Put a little light down in there. You got it? Mm -hmm. Put a light down in there. When you get out there on those horses, I want you to take that hammer. And I want you to burst that pot open. When you burst the pot, at the same time, all this light come up at one time. And like to scare them to death. And that's what we need to do in America is burst these pots and let this light go. So what God did is put the Paul said, but we have this treasure in earthly vessel. The gospel of Christ were, was in the apostles. And what they did, that light came from them. Man, good. Have this treasure in earth and vessels. The commander of the light. That the excellence of the power may be in God and not of us. Pretty good. Paul said in Acts chapter 4, Luke wrote 4.13, Now when they saw that the boldness of Peter and John uh, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, 
they marveled, marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Now that's the lesson. Turn on the light. Here's another. To make all men see. What? Turn on the light. Do what? Turn on the light so folk can see. 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 Mm. Alright, little boy said, man, what you got? You got you can write on. You can write on both sides. Yeah. See. See what? Looking at Ephesians. One, twenty-two, twenty-three, two, sixteen, three, six. Let's look at that. Got it? Watch this now. It's good. We can we get ready to close. I know it's about lunch time. Just, just, just bear with me. Just a few minutes. You got to see something. All right? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 3, all spiritual pleasant in heavenly places is in Christ Jesus. Right? Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 23, 22 and 23, it says what? Our brother Miller? And he put all things under his feet. Three. And gave him to be head over all things to the church. Wait a minute. To what? The what? Come on, what what is that? The what? To the church. The C A U R C H. Read it. Which is his body. Now watch this here. The body. B O D Y. The body is the church. Church is the body. Mm -hmm. Now if got it? Amen. Ephesians 4 and verse 4 says there's one body. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Look. What is the body? The body is the church. Church is the body. Body is the church. Church is the body. One body, one church. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. He's the only person that ever said that. Mm -hmm. And he did it. Acts 20, verse 28. He purchased the church with his blood. Still with me? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, pretty good. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 16, what does it say? And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body. Wait a minute. Reconcile means friend again. Mm -hmm. God and man get together, not in prayer. Like the Graham fellow said, Amen. just pray the sinner's prayer. That man, you can't read that in the almanac, let alone the Bible. Amen. Pray the sinner's prayer, and he said that. That's wrong. God and man get together that he might reconcile reconciliation, friends again. That he might reconcile both where to God, to God where in one body, in one body. What's the one body? The church. Amen. So if you be reconciled to God, you got to be in the one body, which is the church. Well, which one? There's a lot of churches. How many in Scripture? That's one. Wait a minute. How many in the light? Only one church in this life. Mm -hmm. One. One church. Amen. Which one? The one that Jesus died. Mm -hmm. Now, do, do we make somebody upset? Don't mean to, but the Catholic and not in there. Roman Catholic, Greek Catholic, the Baptist, the First Baptist, Second Baptist, the Primitive Baptist, the Southern Baptist, none of that's in it. It's on the internet, but it's not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Mormons, the Episcopalians, the Methodists, the Blacks, Black Methodists, White Methodists. You know what I do this at home? I get in trouble, I told you. You know, black people in, in America, they want to take all the statues down. They want to condemn everything that's been detrimental to them. And then uh, I got on TV and I said this. I said, the, the church you in, it was started by a white man. Why are you still in it? It's going to take you to hell. That statue ain't going to do nothing to you. When you get out here, that boy, you see it, don't you? Boy, he, he, he laughing. He see it. You give up that church not in the Bible. White men started the Baptist. The ba there no black men start no Baptist church. That was started by John Smith. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give that up? Boy, he and boy, look at him back there laughing. He said, man, look at I never thought. I know it. They never thought about it. Mm -hmm. 
But that's on the internet. Mm -hmm. You want to give something? Give that church up that's not in the Bible. It's calling you to go to hell. Mm -hmm. Ain't no statute bothering me. How the statute of the flag going to bother? It ain't bothering me. Yep. But that Catholic church, if I had stayed in it, I'd been wrapped up in hell in it. Mm -hmm. I got out of it. Why? Because it's not in the scripture. Look here, I see old Pitt Jr. over there. He finally got woke up over uh -huh. there. He said, Brother Shannon, you're right. I know it. Yeah. That's the Gentile should be, <laughs> wait a minute, it says that we might be both reconciled unto God where? Through, or uh, no, in, in, one, one body. in one body. How? Through the cross. Wait a minute. Through or by mm -hmm. the cross. What do you mean by the cross? Mm -hmm. What Jesus did. His death, burial, and the resurrection. Mm -hmm. He paid for our salvation. It was all because of what Jesus done. All right? Let's go a little further. Then in verse 3, 6 says what? 3, 6. 3, 6 says what? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body. Of what? Same body. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. A -A -A A-A-S-A-M-E. Same body. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Same body. What? Same body. Mm -hmm. What do you mean same? Same. Same. You know why Coca-Cola tastes the same in Kentucky as it does in Tennessee? They use the same form. Mm -hmm. <laughs> same. Same. The same gospel went to Bruce one church. Same. Mm -hmm. Now drop down to verse 9. It says what? And to make all see. Well, huh? What, what does uh, the, the King James say? Everybody got King James? All you, men say. What, what you got? All, men. All, all what? All men. All men. All men see. That's what we're trying to do. Is so folk, folk can see. All men see what? The fellowship of the mystery. Wait a minute. What is the fellowship of the mystery? That's the gospel. Mm -hmm. Listen, from all ages, this is what's been talked about. Is the coming of Christ down on the cross so men can have remission of sin being the one body, living right, worshiping right, and working, and die and go to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's just it. That's not almost it. That's it. That's it. Amen. Now, what part are you going to play in that? Good? Amen. Jesus Christ came and died on the cross, shed his blood. He, was, he died, he was buried, he rose again the third day, according to the scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Mm -hmm. Tap number one, you hear. Tap number two, and you believe. Step number three, you got to repent. Mm -hmm. What? You got to repent of your sin. Mm -hmm. All that devilish stuff, you got to change your mind about it. Stop. Mm -hmm. Would you confess with your mouth your faith in Jesus? Your faith in Jesus Christ, C H R I S T, and his blood. Help. Faith in his blood? Where, where'd that come from? Who ever heard of faith in the blood? What? Let's read it. Look at Romans 4, 16. Pretty good. What kind of Bible do you have here? you got a new King James. I'm going to have to convert y'all. <laughs> 4, 16. I don't know what the New American Standard says. What, what, what does the Bible say in 4, 16? It says what? Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law. But okay, but anyway, that's not the way I want, but it's talking about the faith in the blood. Why? Listen here. You hear, believe, and repent, confess, and be baptized. Is that where your faith is? Is that where your faith is? And you think this is what's going to save you? Mm -hmm. This is that's saved, but it's not the Savior. Christ is the Savior of the what? Of the body. And we are to make all men see the mystery. What mystery? That the Gentiles should be fed as and of the same body, same church. You got, you got anybody here that's not a member of the Church of Christ? Not a member of the body of Christ? And the Church of Christ is in Christ. No, this building is not in Christ. Look at it. Look at it. This is not the Church of Christ. This is nothing to do with the Church of Christ. This is a meeting house where we meet. Christians are in Christ. And when you're in Christ, you're in the Church of Christ automatically. And the Lord asked you to the church. 
Now see, see the nomination said everybody can't fit in that little building. Y'all people think everybody got to be in that little old building. See, they really missed it. Lick your fingers and go to Isaiah 2 and verse 2. I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to get out of here. But you all won't let me. If you stop saying amen, I'll quit. <laughs> all right, Isaiah 2 and verse 2, it says what? And it shall come to pass in the latter days. What? That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountain and shall be exalted above all the hills. Read. And all nations shall flow to it. Wait a minute. All nations shall flow to it. Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute. The it refers to the church. Mm -hmm. So it can't be physical. It's got to be spiritual in character, makeup. Mm -hmm. So when you obey the gospel, faith, repentance, confession, and baptism of Christ, the Lord adds you to the church in a universal sense. Then you make up in your mind that you're going to worship with a local congregation. Amen. But when the Lord adds you to the church, you're in the church of Christ universal. Mm -hmm. You got it? Mm -hmm. And it's not physical, it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. But you have to assemble with the saints, got it, on the first day of the week in a specific location. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Yes, sir. Now, are you faithful? You don't think I can pick it up here? See, you think I'm so old. I can't, oh, boy, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, let know it. Wait a minute, let, listen to me. Are you faithful? I am not trying to get you to come to me or come down. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm, I like to see you give your life totally to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do that, God will bless you. You're going to have some problems, but he'll bless you. If you're a member of the Church of Christ, are you converted to this building or the Bible? Are you converted to Christians or are you converted to Christ? I'm converted to Christ and His Word. That way, I, 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 I'm going to always see because when you convert to members, members can do wrong and it, it may hurt your faith. But you really didn't have any if you're trusting in it. So I'm trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're here tonight, today, I hope I said something to help somebody. If you're here and you're a member of the Church of Christ and you haven't been faithful, I'm not trying to get you to come forward. I'd like for you to reconsider how good God has been to you mm -hmm. and make up your mind that I need to do better. And if you hadn't obeyed the gospel, faith, repentance, confession, baptism of Christ, was a mission scene. That's a decision you need to make. But before baptism, you need to be converted to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're here and that's your desire, do it right now. Together we stand and sing.